Lux presents Hollywood. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Burt Lancaster, Jeff Chandler, and Deborah Padgett in Broken Arrow. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Too often in our Western pictures, the American Indian has been cast in the role of villain. For according to the Western movie code, the white man is always the hero. However, in tonight's play, Broken Arrow, we have two heroes. One, an American Indian, famous leader of the ferocious Apache tribe. The other, an American frontiersman, whose understanding of his savage enemy brought peace and goodwill to the early West. As the stars of this current screen success from the 20th Century Fox Studios, we have Burt Lancaster, who was kind enough to step in and play the role when James Stewart suddenly became ill. Co-starring is Jeff Chandler, who, by the way, is a special favorite of ours, because when he was a supporting actor in this theater, we knew it was just a matter of time till Hollywood claimed him. And for romance, we have adorable little Deborah Padgett, whom we first welcomed to this stage as a starlet. And as a starlet, Deborah told us how much she relied on Lux Flakes to maintain her personal wardrobe. Lux Flakes are always a favorite of stars and their studios because of the gentle, protective care they give. Now, Broken Arrow, starring Burt Lancaster as Tom Jeffords, Jeff Chandler as Cochise, and Deborah Paget as Sancire. This is the story of a land, of the people who lived on it in the year 1870, and of two men, one named Cochise and the other Tom Jeffords, who tells our story. Cochise was an Indian leader of the Chiricahua Apache tribe. What I have to tell happened just as you'll hear it. The only change will be that when the Apache speak, they will speak our language. Since getting out of the Union Army, I'd been prospecting in Arizona for gold. One day I got word from a new colonel who had arrived in Tucson and said he wanted to see me. I was passing through the mountain country when I saw some buzzards circling in the sky. Well, I figured it was a hurt deer, a rabbit maybe, or a snake. Only it wasn't a deer, not a rabbit either. His kind was more dangerous than a snake. He was an Apache. An Apache boy. For ten years, we'd been on a savage war with his people. A bloody, no-give, no-take war. The boy was badly hurt. I gave him some water. He thanked me by lunging at me with his knife. And he just stared at me, waiting for me to kill him. Now, don't move. If I wanted to kill your boy, I'd have done it before. Now, let me see just what's happened to you. He had eight pieces of buckshot in his back. I stayed with him for three days. Then, on the fourth morning, I saddled my horse. We're going now? Well, I must go. But you stay. Too soon for you. In the wiki up, my mother is crying. My father looks for me. I am their only one now. No brothers or sisters? White men kill my brothers and my sister at Big Creek. My mother is crying, he said. It never struck me that an Apache woman would cry over a son like any other woman. Apaches are wild animals, we all said. Before you go, tell me. Do you pray to killer of enemies? Why, no. Apaches pray for all white men to die. But now I pray to keep you safe. Here, you take this. My necklace. Well, thanks, boy. Thank you. And it's very big against headache and disease. Now it is yours. You wear it and... Suddenly an arrow slammed into a tree trunk. Then another and another. I dove for the rocks. Put away your gun. The arrows are only to warn you. This white man is my friend. He is my friend. He must not be hurt. 
When did my son become a tame Apache? Father, look, my back. He gave me life again when the soldiers wounded me. This one, he was with the soldiers? No, he found me later. He healed me. It would be wrong to harm him. You do not give orders. You speak our tongue? A little. White men pay many dollars for the scalp of an Apache. Why did you not take his scalp? If I kill an Apache, it will not be for scalp or money. You are a woman, maybe. It is well known that Apaches do not take scalps either. They are not women. You did not kill? We will not kill this time. But not again. They wanted to kill me, all right. But they were letting me go. They stood there watching me as I went to my horse. And then from a distance, I heard a bird cry. Suddenly, the Indians swarmed over me, tying my arms and gagging me before I could shout a warning. The bird call had come from a guard down the canyon. He'd seen something. A party of white men. My... Later, they brought me to the scene of their ambush. Three white men were dead. Learn well. This is Apache land. You have no right here. Where Cochise lives, no white man can live. Now go. Go far. Let your face not be seen again. I reached Tucson the next morning. The new colonel was waiting for me. I'm glad to know you, Jeffords. I'm Colonel Bernal. I've come here with orders to clean out Cochise and his Apaches from the Grand Mountain area. Well, that's a pretty big order, sir. Wipe them all out. Butcher them like hogs. Kill every one of them. That man, I've just been talking to him. He was with a party of miners. They were ambushed yesterday morning. Half of them were killed. He said they wanted Cochise. He said they got 10 or 12 Apaches out of a war party of 50. There weren't 50, Colonel. There were only five, and not one of them got scratched. How do you know? I saw what happened. You saw it? Seems to me most men would have let a hand. I was hogtied. The Apaches jumped me earlier. So you just fought your way out, huh? No, they let me go. They let you go? I never heard of a thing like that happening to a white man, did you, John? No. How about you, Wes? No, nobody else. I'd helped a wounded Chiricahua boy, and I guess they thought they owed me something. Apaches playing fair? Oh, hello, Mr. Lowry. I don't understand this, Jeffords. You found a wounded Apache and you didn't kill him? That's right, Mr. Lowry. I didn't kill him. I'd like to ask you why. Colonel Manal, just what was it you wanted to see me about, huh? I think I know how we can stop Cochise. I have 250 men in town, fresh, disciplined troopers from the east. But I need you to do a little reconnoitering for me. In six months, the war will be over and we'll have Cochise up by the neck. No, no, sir. No, you won't. Cochise can't even read a map. But he and his men know every gully, every foot of mountain, and every waterhole in Arizona. Why, he can't even write his own name. But his intelligence service knows when you got to Fort Grant and just exactly how many men you've got. He stopped the Butterfield stage from running, and he stopped the U.S. mails. No, you're not going to string him up in six months, Colonel. Not in six years. Good day, Jim. Uh, Jeffords, wait. You, uh, you will scout for me, though. You can find somebody else. Maybe Jeffords don't know which side he's on. That's right, Slade, that's right. I'm not looking for trouble, Jeffords, but if you don't fight against them, then you're with them, and I got a right to say that. What's your name, mister? My name's Slade. I own a ranch only a mile out from Fort Grant. Even so, Apaches burned my house last month. My wife was inside. Seems to me a white man would want to see that sort of thing stopped. That's right, anybody would. Then why won't you help the colonel? Well, that's private business, mister. War ain't private business. Not when they're murdering our women and kids, it ain't. Big Creek, we murdered Indian women and kids. Oh, Chief started this thing, and any man who's... Now, hold on, mister. A smart aleck little lieutenant fresh out of the East started this war. He flew a flag of truce, which Cochise honored. And then he hanged Cochise's brother and five others under that flag. Well, you hear all sorts of stories. You want to know why I didn't kill that Apache boy? For the same reason that I wouldn't kill your boy or scout for the army. Because I'm sick and tired of all this killing. Besides, who asked us out here in the first place? Now, look here, Tom. I don't claim the white man's always done right, but we're bringing civilization here, ain't we? Wipe them all out. Butcher them like hogs. It's the only way. Kill them all. Well, I had one good friend in town, Milt Duffield. Milt ran the mail depot. I wanted to see Milt, and I wanted to see a man who worked for him. An Indian named Juan. One of the few tame ones in the territory. So you turned the colonel down, Tom. Well, it's up to you, I guess. Yes, Milt, I, I guess it is. Meantime, no eastern males come in or gone out of here for seven weeks now. I know. But maybe there's a way to get it through. A new route? Oh, no, no. Same old route. A one. 
Juan, I got some work for you. Not much work here anymore. Well, if you want to earn some money, I'd like to hire you for, say, uh, well, say a moon, maybe. I want you to teach me to speak Apache good. I want you to learn me about Apache spirits, about Apache ways. No white man has to learn these things. Why you? I want to speak to Cochise. You crazy? I tell you, Milt, I'm sick and tired of having people like Slade and Lowry ask me which side I'm on. Are they willing to take a chance up in Cochise's territory to look for gold? All right. Now I'll take a chance in something else. Cochise will not speak with white man. Well, we'll send up smoke signals. He will not come to see you. No, no, no. I, I, I want to go to see him. To his stronghold? That's right. No white man's seen Cochise in ten years and lived to tell it. Don't try it, Tom. Juan. Juan, will you teach me? I want to speak to Cochise about letting the mail go through. Maybe even about peace. I will teach you. Thanks. But for this, I will not take gold. It will end bad. Cochise will kill you. From Juan, I learned all he could teach me about Cochise and the people he ruled. Then came the day when Juan rode with me out of Tucson. At the fringe of the canyon country, we built a fire and made a smoke signal. The smoke says that you are coming into the land of the Apaches in peace. They will not believe it, but maybe it will make them want to find out. You've been a good friend, Juan. No, they will kill you. Well, maybe so. You better go on back to town now. Remember then, if you see Cochise, do not lie to him. Not in the smallest thing. His eyes will see into your heart. He is greater than other men. I'll remember. So I started into the canyons. I never felt so lonely or so... so dog scared in my life. There wasn't a sign of an Apache. But I knew that the smoke signal had been seen. And not a movement I made went unwatched. For three days, I climbed higher into the mountains. Every sound, the rolling of a stone, the call of a bird or the coyotes at night. Maybe this would be the last sound I'd hear. I kept my hands visible, away from my weapons... I tried to look at ease. And then I saw it. The Apache village. Great stone crags guarding the approaches in a forest beyond. I rode by the sentinel rocks. And suddenly out of nowhere, the trail behind me became alive with Indians. And far ahead, I saw them pouring out of the wickiups. Their rifles in their hands. No one said a word. When they surrounded me, they stopped my horse. Finally, one of them spoke. Get off the horse. You... We have met before. Before we let you live, you are a fool. I have come to speak to Cochise. Even a fool knows that he respects truth as he respects bravery. Take his weapons. I hand them to you. I will want them when I leave. How do you know you will leave here alive? I am Cochise. Speak. When the Indian wishes to signal his brother, he does so by smoke sign. This is the white man's signal. This in my hand. This is a letter. My brothers far away can look at this and understand its meaning. We call this mail. We have seen such signals before. The men who carry the mail seek no trouble. Yet your warriors kill them. I have come to ask you to let these men travel in safety. This mail carries war signals against us. No, no. This is used for other talk. War signals are sent by the military. You have carried such messages against us? When I was a scout for the army, yes. You have fought us? Yes. In the Battle of Apache Pass. Come with me. I could hear the click of their rifles as Cochise led me through the angry files of his people. He said nothing until he entered his wiki up and sat down. I am the leader of my people. We fight for our land against Americans who try to take it from us. You give me no reason why I should not kill American mail riders. We kill you, too. Mail riders do your people no harm. There were Apaches who did your people no harm. They were hanged. One was my brother. My people have done yours great wrong. I say this to you as I have said it to them. You think because I am an Indian, I'm a fool, you can trick me? I would not have come here if I thought that. The Apaches are warriors without equal. But compared to the whites, they are small in number. And tomorrow, they will be smaller. I will not talk with you of that. Your people do not want peace. They have taught me that. I ask you to think on it. 
Why should not the white man act first? You want me to be better than the white man? A white man has come here. I ask you to think of tomorrow. My mind must work on it. You will rest in my wiki up tonight. It is my strong wish. But first you will walk with me so my people will see us together and you will be safe. With the coming of darkness, some of the Indians started a chant, a song of some kind. And then around the fires, I could see the dancers approaching, warriors in full paint with masks and costumes, like nothing I had seen or heard about before. This is a spirit dance, the spirits of good and evil. I think that this must be the dance that comes before the sunrise ceremony for a young girl. Yes, you are very different from other whites. You learn to speak our tongue, try to understand our ways. Maybe someday you will kill me or I will kill you. But we will not spit on each other. That is how I feel. The girl we dance for is in the holiest time of her life. It is good luck to visit her now. Would you like to visit her? Yes. Come with me. Were you ever wounded? Wounded? Why, yes, in my arm. We will tell her. For this night only, this girl is even more holy than most. Maybe because she has been away from us for a long time. She is very old for this ceremony. It is very special. There was a faint light in the wickiup. The glow from the fires. She sat there alone. Her eyes closed. Young. Beautiful. Before her, even Cochise was humble. White painted lady. I have old wounds. I hold out my hands before you. Each scar is a mark of love for your people. The path of your people is stretched long behind you. And you are the head. And you are the heart. And you are the blood. Killer of enemies is your father and you are his son. You will be well. I have brought someone with me. Then he is welcome. He has an old arm wound. Give me your arm. Does it hurt you? Sometimes. It will never hurt again. Your life will be long. The good things will be yours. The sun will shine for you. We stood there in the silence for a moment. Then Cochise led me out again. At such a time as this, she sees and knows many things. What is her name? Sonsire. Sonsire. Morning Star. Yes. Morning Star. Cochise took me back to his wiki up. He would see me in the morning, he said. But I couldn't sleep. Even long after the drums and the dances were finished, I lay there thinking. Cochise, the savage. Cochise, the killer. Cochise, as strong and as wise as any man I'd ever known. And then he faded from my mind. And in his place, I saw a girl. The girl, Sansira. Before our stars return with Act Two of Broken Arrow, here's Libby Collins, our Hollywood reporter, with sensational news. Listen. Listen to what Hollywood is saying about it. Marvelous. Sensational. It's perfect. Nothing like it. Joan Caulfield says... I could hardly believe my eyes. Claudette Colbert says... It's simply wonderful. Alexis Smith says... It's better than ever. It's sensational. It's new luck. A better than ever luck. New Lux with color freshener. The most thrilling improvement since Lux was invented. New Lux with color freshener is a real beauty bath for fabrics. It gives new life to all colors every time they're Lux. Hollywood screen stars, women everywhere, are saying it's a washing miracle. Smart prints are brighter and gayer, look glowingly alive. Wait till you see what it does for white things. They stay frosty white, dazzling white, whiter than you'd ever dream possible. All colors sparkle with new life and beauty every time you wash them. No other way of washing makes all your nice things look so fresh, so bright, so truly new. 
And this wonderful new Lux is mild and safe as ever. Now, more than ever, new Lux with color freshener is the favorite wardrobe care of Hollywood screen stars. The Lux in your neighborhood store right now is new Lux with color freshener. Get a big box tomorrow. Give all your nice washables that nice as new Lux look. Here's our producer, Mr. Keeley. Act two of Broken Arrow, starring Burt Lancaster as Tom, Jeff Chandler as Cochise, and Deborah Paget as Sonsiore. The next morning, I found myself free to come and go through the village. I walked to the stream to watch, but I discovered I wasn't alone there. Full of curiosity, aren't you, Sun Theory? Well, uh, what I'm doing, it's, uh, it's called shaving. It's all right. You can come closer. See? Shaving. Uh, I thought you were skinning yourself. <laughs> no. How did you know I was there? Why, I saw you through this. We call this a mirror. Well, I see my face. Oh, what a thing it is. Mirror. Here, it is yours. Mine? You can look at yourself every day. You can see how beautiful you are. No, wait a minute. Please, don't go away. I must. It is not fitting. But why? I am not married. Well, aren't you allowed to talk to Apache men? Only at ceremonies or in the dancing. But I was told that Apache boys and girls, well, they, they often pick those they want to marry. How can they do that if they, if they don't get acquainted? Oh, they get acquainted... There are ways. Which ways? They meet by accident, where no one sees them. Oh. I leave you now. I have work to do to pick juniper berries. Uh, where? There in the forest. I was going to walk up that way myself, uh, by accident. No, please, you must not. You told me not to follow you, but I had to. I don't know when I may see you again. When do you leave? Cochise said he would talk to me soon. Will you come back? I hope so. I want to. It's important to me. Why? May I speak truly from my heart? It will be all right. All my life I've been mostly alone. I wanted it that way. But when I saw you last night and you touched me and you prayed for me, I felt bad being alone. I knew that I needed to see you before I left so that I could find out if it was the same as it was then. Is it the same? Yes. Now when I go away, I will be lonely for someone, for the first time in my life. I think maybe I too will be... You will be what? Cochise! Cochise has seen her! She ran off. I waited for Cochise. But whatever he was thinking, he made no mention of Sonsiere. I have decided about the mail. You have kept your word. If I let the mail riders go in safety, but no one else, there will be little loss. It will show the whites what power the Apache has. The idea makes me laugh a little. <laughs> it is a good step. The seed is small, but maybe the tree will grow big. I will be happy to tell my people. It would be wise if you leave now. Your horse is saddled. You will reach Tucson without harm. <laughs> It was big news that I took back to Tucson, big enough to bring out quite a crowd in front of Milt Duffield's mail office. You're trying to tell us, Jeffers, you saw Cochise himself? That's right, Mr. Slade, I did. He gave me his word he'll let the mail riders through. Oh, uh, what's that worth? The word of an Apache murderer. Well, while you were up there with him, his fighters attacked the wagon train just 40 miles east of here, killed every person in it. Cochise never said anything about calling off the war. He just said that the mail could go through. Well, if you're so full of faith in the word of an Apache, will you lay a little bet on it? You name it, Mr. Lowry. $300 that five mail riders in succession leave here and that five come back? You've got a bet, Mr. Lowry. Well, you heard him, gents. Mail routes guaranteed safe for Tom Jeffords and his pal Cochise. Now, who writes first? <laughs> What's the matter, no volunteers? Looks like you'll have to go yourself, Jeffords. All right, Slade, I will. Oh, no, you won't. That won't prove a thing. I'll go. That'll prove something. Crazy. You better think it over, Milt. Milt's your friend, Jeffords. You gonna let him go out there and be butchered? When can you leave, Milt? I'll leave right now. Thanks. Well, he's... Milt came back, 
so did the next rider, and the next, and the next. I was so proud of Cochise, I was ready to bust. Then Colonel Banal sent for me. Come in, come in, Jeffers. <laughs> well, I've just been speaking to the mail riders. They tell me it's real peaceful on the trail these days. So peaceful, in fact, that I'm going north for a while. I'm going to bring in a wagon train from Masila. A wagon train? Why not? Well, I, I don't want to tell you your business, Colonel, but... Cochise made no agreement about wagon trains. You could be jumped anywhere along that trail. That's exactly what I'm hoping for. And for once, we'll have all the men we need. Well, he'll have enough, too. No, I don't think so. I'll have 75 cavalrymen in plain sight. Then the mule drivers, each fully armed. And in the wagons, out of sight, 50 more troopers. Well, I hope you make it, Colonel. Don't be a fool, Jeffords. It's not a wagon train I'm interested in. I'm out for Cochise. And this time, I think we'll suck him in. I want you to come with us. I can't go with you. Very well. But when we come back, uh, they'll be ready to make a deal with us. Maybe you won't object to helping us with a treaty. No, sir. I won't object. Five nights later, three drivers from Bernal's wagon train staggered into Tucson. They'd been ambushed. We were cut to pieces. Fifty dead and a hundred wounded. Colonel Bernal's killed. Five thousand pounds of grain. Every wagon, every gun, every mule. Bernal never should have tried it. Uh, maybe not. But how did Coach East know we had men hidden in the wagons? He must have known. He knows what goes on at Fort Bowie. He knows what goes on here. Oh, I don't think he does. Then how did it happen? Who's telling him? Who's his spy? Find him, find him, and string him up. Maybe I can tell you, mister. Voucher. Yeah, you were with them miners, weren't you? Maybe a lot of us can tell you. Oh, ho. Who is he? Mr. Duffield. Over here, Juan. What do you want? The mail rider has come in from Bowie. Well, he is unharmed. You hear that, Larry? That's number five. Looks like you lost your bet. Yeah, sure looks like it. You don't pay to bet with Tom Jeffords, now does it? He's in with Coach Chase. He's a personal friend of that murderer, Coach Chase. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, none of that. Anybody else want to call me a renegade? I'll never call you a renegade, Jeffords. A man's a liar who says you are. Getting kind of soft, aren't you, Lowry? Shut up and let me finish. How come Cochise is so partial to you? How come he lets the mail through, then wipes out a whole wagon train? Because he gave his word and he's a man of honor. Man of honor? No Indian's a man of honor. The first peace move in ten years and you're all too blind to see it. Peace move, huh? We'll have peace when every Apache is hanging from a tree. Here's your $300, Jeffords. Here's what I think of your $300. The drinks are on me. I don't drink with any Indian lover. He's a copperhead. He sold us out. Bring him up. What are we waiting for? Release that man. I said release that man. Who is this guy? My name is General Howard. I've just come in from Fort Bowie. Isn't there enough trouble going on without this sort of thing? I've got a dozen troopers around this building. There'll be no hanging tonight, gentlemen. Come along, Jeffords. I'll hear what you've got to say alone in my office. Then when the, the mail rider got through tonight, why, they were all sure I'd sold them out. Well, that's the story. I don't think I'm not grateful to you, General, but Jeffords, I... Jeffords, I want you to take me to see Cochise. Why do you want to see him? If I can, to make a treaty of peace. Who sent you here? The President of the United States, with full power to make a fair treaty. Yeah, to be changed later. Any treaty I make will stand. I warn you, General, I'm not going to sell Cochise down the river. Now, what's your idea of a fair peace? Suppose you tell me. All right, I will tell you. Equality. The Apaches are a free people. They have a right to stay free on their own land, with no soldiers on it. What else? Well, you can talk the rest over with Cochise. Then you'll take me to see him? You'll go alone, without troops. Is that the best way? That's the only way. Then I'll go alone. <laughs> Once again, I was back at the Apache stronghold. Only Cochise had not yet returned from the ambush of the wagon train. But someone else was there. Sincere, there is something I need to know. I have been away almost a moon. Has anything changed with you? No. When you went away, I, I became frightened. I thought, he won't come back. And even if he does, when he returns from his own people, he, he will look at me with cool eyes. 
But now I... I am no longer afraid. You're trembling. You put such new feelings in my heart. It is there I am trembling. I love you, son, Zire. I love you. They are returning. Cochise and the warriors. You can welcome them later. Not now, son, Zire. No, Tom. Not now. This is the warriors' return. Let it be told in our campfires how the Chiricahuas fought, how the great Cochise led us, a great wagon train destroyed, their wagons and horses taken, corn for the whole winter, blankets and guns. And listen more. In battle, there are losses. Some of our men have gone to live with their fathers. They were brave. They died honorably. Now, for the last time, listen to their names. They will be angry if their names are ever mentioned again. Ponce, Victorio, Fiancene and his son with Joker. So I have come to you again, Cochise. Only this time to speak of an end of the war. This man you call General Howard. If I make a peace with him, a bigger general will throw it away. No, no, he speaks for the chief of all Americans. There is no one greater. How do I know they will keep a peace? How do they know you will keep it? My word is my life. I do not break it. I know that, but they do not. You trust me, Cochise. There are Americans that I trust, but there are Indians that I would not trust. Me too. I would talk now of other things. Ah, it is good. Then listen. All evening, my friend, your eyes have gone to the maiden Sonsiere. <laughs> I'm glad you speak of her. I want her for my wife. I will do all the things expected of a husband here. So? And where will you live? Here? There will always be Apaches who have suffered from white men and will hate you for it. Tucson, maybe? Will there not always be white men who will hate your wife because of the color of her skin? You'll go far away then, in new places. But your eyes will never see anything. Always they will turn toward home. And Sonsiere... You will look at her as at a strange animal. I ask you to think on it. I have thought of nothing else for a moon. Sonsiere is young. She does not know. Besides, I, I have listened to her mother. She will refuse you. I'll take her away from here. She'll go with me, too. She will not refuse. I, I make a joke. Always the girl's mother is a good joke. <laughs> then, then I can marry her? Bring three horses and saddles to her parents. I'll bring them back from Tucson with me. No, you. no, you will let me give them for you. Oh, no, no. They're I... almost yours anyway. They came from your people. <laughs> I want to do this for you, my friend. And, and the marriage, now? Not now. First, you go back to Tucson. Look into the heart of this general. Do not bring him back unless you are sure of him. Tomorrow, I will send out runners. Apaches from all tribes will come here. Talk of peace is a big thing. I cannot decide it alone. That is not expected. And remember, I make no promises. I returned to Tucson. For a solid week, I studied and I questioned General Howard. By the time I brought him back to Cochise, I knew he could be trusted. I prayed that a decent peace would come from the meeting of these two men. I wanted it for my country. I wanted it for Cochise and his people. And I wanted it because I loved a girl. Tom. Tom, you are back. But it is not permitted to visit me. Cochise will allow it, for a short time only. Cochise? He is in council? Yes. Soon he will send for me to join them. But not now. No, not now. M my mother is in the wikiup. We will sit out here. Closer. No, not closer. We must not even touch our hands. I have been very busy these days. I prepare my clothes for the wedding. I must build a special wiki up for our honeymoon across the lake, away from everybody. In all this, my mother helps me and teaches me. And I try to do as I, as I think she did when she was a girl. And she couldn't have done it neater. What is that? <laughs> what does it mean? Oh, that's something that, that the Americans say. It means... 
Well, it means that I love you and I'll honor your parents. But most of all, it means that I love you. The American, he is wanted now. Always when we are alone. We are never alone. Cochise. I think he plans it that way. Big joke. The Indian leaders had been in council together. They called for General Howard, too. There would be questions. And upon our answers could rest the fate of all the Southwest Territory. And you understand, Cochise, about the signing of these maps. I will place my name upon yours. You will place your mark upon mine. What is the purpose of this? It is a way of showing to all people for all time any agreement that you and General Howard make. If we make peace with the Americans, can we still raid the Mexicans? There cannot be war against the Mexicans either. And let the white eyes be sent back. Wait, the... we will talk further by ourselves. Now is the time only for questions. If the chief of the white man dies, what will follow? His word is a bond on the chief who follows him. Suppose some white man wants yellow iron and he comes in our land to take it. Can we kill him? Such a man should be captured and given to our military. Then he will be judged and punished. Suppose he is not captured until he has killed one of us. If a white man kills an Indian on your territory, we will hang him. That will be something for Cochise to see. <laughs> the two white men will go now. I will bring you our decision. I trust none of this. They offer a piece of paper that marks where we can go and where we cannot go. Our land gets smaller. Then he says we cannot go into Mexico and our land grows still smaller. Where will we get corn and horses if not by taking them as we always have? The Americans will give us cattle. We will raise them and trade them for our needs. The answer of a woman. I am not afraid. I speak from my heart. You speak well. Speak more. It is not the Apache way to be grandmothers to cattle. Cochise is ready to surrender us all. It is not this false peace we need, but a new chief. Now I say this. It is not easy to change. But sometimes it is required. The Americans are growing stronger while we grow weaker. If a big wind comes, a tree must bend or be lifted out by its roots. And I say this also. I will make a test of this piece, a test of three moons. I take one of my arrows. I break the arrow. I will try the way of peace. Those who stay with me must keep my word. Let all others walk away. I walk away. I walk away. I walk away. I walk away. Who else comes? Who else? Who else? Take your women, your children, your horses, your weapons. Leave our territory. I leave you my name also. Now I am ashamed to be a Chiricahua. I will take the name the Mexican enemies have given me. From now on, I am Geronimo. I'm worried, General. They're taking a long time. Too long. Meanwhile, I find this food delicious. What meat is it? Pony. In your honor, sir. Pony? Now, what kind of meat is that? A pony is a small horse, General. Oh. <laughs> a small horse. The council has ended. We will try this piece. There must be a time for testing. Three moons. And why is it needed? The white man has not shown in the past that he will keep a piece. A three-month armistice. Well, maybe it's a good idea. I have placed a stone before my wiki up. For every day without war, there will be another stone. When three moons have passed, the pile will be high. Then we will place a white flag upon it, and there will be peace. My heart is glad, Cochise. I am not yet glad. To talk of peace is not hard. To live it is very hard. I will wait three moons to be glad. <laughs> Not everyone was happy about the treaty. There were those in Tucson who still thought that Cochise was a liar and a murderer. But I saw and I heard of things that never before happened in the Southwest Territory. For the first time in years, the Butterfield stage was running again. Some of Geronimo's men attacked it, and they were driven off. Not by American soldiers, but by Cochise's Indians. It was almost too much for the people of Tucson to believe. I could go back to the canyons now. Back to San Sierra. Well, he's gone, Lowry. Jeffords is back with the Apaches. What are we waiting for? Slade, you're a fool. 
There's no need for us to stir up trouble. Sooner or later, the Apaches will start it again. Yeah, and when they do, some more of us will be dead. It's time we pick the place in the moment ourselves. There'll never be a peace as long as Cochise is alive. And I say give them a chance to prove it. Did they give my wife a chance? Or your own sister and her kids? You can be with us or not, Lowry. I've got a plan. I'm going to kill Cochise. <laughs> Tonight, I have chosen two guests to share the spotlight. My first is Hollywood-born Kathleen Hughes, who won a contract at 20th Century Fox without the knowledge or help of her uncle, F.U. Herbert, the famous writer. Our second is a glamorous new star, but more of that later. Kathleen, I understand that your first screen role was on location. That's right, Mr. Keeley, in Nevada. It was the first time I'd ever been out of California. And would you like to travel? Oh, yes. I want especially to visit England. Maybe if I were a star, I might even be presented to the king and queen, as Irene Dunn was when she made the mudlark there. Well, we'll all have a chance to see her superb characterization of Queen Victoria soon. The big charity premiere on January 30th at the Chinese Theater will be Hollywood's most spectacular in years. I wouldn't miss the mudlark for the world. And tonight, I have news of another premiere. New Lux with Color Freshener. A better-than-ever Lux that is winning new fame in leading Hollywood studios and in the homes of Hollywood's most glamorous screen personalities. It's really terrific. You know, when I was on location in Reno, the first thing I did was to buy a box of the New Lux. I used it for my lingerie again and again. And the color stayed so bright and so fresh, I thought I was dreaming. It's the most sensational improvement in Lux ever made. All colors look brighter, gayer, more sparkling than ever before. Smart prints come alive, look sharper, clearer. And whites, never have you seen white things look so dazzling every time you wash them. Yes, I'd call it a real beauty bath for colors. Hollywood's most glamorous screen stars agree with you, Kathleen. No other way of washing keeps lovely colors so bright. White, so white. And as mild and safe as ever. Ladies, why don't you try New Lux with Color Freshener... For your pastel slips and nighties, your white blouses, your gay printed dresses, see them glow with new beauty every time you wash them. If you're already a Lux fan, you'll discover new Lux with color freshener is more wonderful than ever. Get a big box tomorrow. Give all your washables that nice as new Lux look. Thank you for coming tonight, Kathleen Hughes. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. The curtain rises on Act Three of Broken Arrow, starring Burt Lancaster as Tom, Jeff Chandler as Cochise, and Deborah Paget as Sanciore. The day had come for my marriage to Sanciore. It was on that day that Cochise placed the twelfth stone on the mound in front of his wickiup. So far, it has gone well, my friend. Yes, and the signs are good, here as well as Tucson. I will still wait to be glad. But now you will forget about peace and war. Now you will think only of your bride. The ceremony, is it a long one? No. No, with us, the ceremony of love takes place in the heart. The rest is small. Come, they are waiting for us. Let the woman who is to marry come here. I am here. Let the man who is to marry take his place beside her. The woman's left hand, the man's right hand. With my knife, I bring a drop of blood from each. And with this cord, I bind your hands together. Now you will kneel down upon the earth. Now your blood mixes. Now for you there is no storm, for one is sheltered to the other. Now for you there is no cold, for one is warmth to the other. Now there is no loneliness. Now forever there is no loneliness. 
Go now, ride the white horses to your secret place. Look at you. The sun is high and still you sleep. <laughs> no, not asleep. Just quiet because I'm so happy. I'm afraid if I open my mouth, my happiness will... will rush out into a funny noise like... Yahoo! <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Is it an American word? No, I think it was a word that was made by Adam when he opened his eyes and saw Eve. <laughs> Who are they? Well, they, uh... Well, don't you know? I know so little. Sometime, will you grow tired of me and go back to your people? That is a bad thought, son, Siri. Never think it again. You are my people. Will you tell me that often? Each day of our life together, I will tell it to you. I will always remember the moments of these days. We will remember them together. In the quiet of the night, we will talk of them a little. And in time to come, we will see our children ride white horses, maybe. When we returned to the village, I saw that the pile of stones had grown higher still. There is still peace in the land, tall one. But your men, so many of them seem to have disappeared. I have sent them out. From now on, we will protect all whites leaving Tucson and Fort Bowie. Also, we guard Apache Pass. If this peace does not hold, let it be the whites who break it. Now, where is your woman? In the wiki up, I think You she's... will get her, and we will walk into the canyons. I think I will teach you how to use the bow and arrow. Well, what's so hard about shooting a bow and arrow? <laughs> Nothing, my friend. I think even you can learn. Look, Cochise, he misses again. What sort of man did I marry? Never mind, girl. By the time he is a grown man, he will know how. <laughs> now, you just take it easy. Where's another one of these arrows? This is ridiculous. <laughs> I bring a stranger. Who's that? One of my men. What stranger? Bring him here. I find him in the canyon. He carries this gun. Why, that's Ben Slade's boy. I know this boy, Cochise. Then you will talk to him. It's all right, Bob. Come on up. Your name's Slade, isn't it? That's right, Mr. Jefferson. I've sure been praying you'd be around here. Well, now, nobody's going to hurt you. What happened? You lose your way? Well, no, sir, not exactly. You're the one who said these Apaches wanted peace. I don't call it peaceful when they go right on stealing. Well, what got stolen? Now, two young colts of mine, beauties, swiped by Apaches the night before last. I've been tracking them in the canyon when this redskin jumped me. None of my people took them. The boy lied. I know his father. He's one of the worst haters of the Apaches. If we can show that he's wrong, it will be a good thing. People will hear about it. Maybe you still have some men like Geronimo. Maybe they talk your way with their tongues, but not with their hearts. You speak wisely. I will see these horse signs. Sansiri, uh, maybe you better go back to the village. No, no, Tom, please let me go with you. All right, if you want to. All right, Bob, now you take us down there and show us these tracks. Hmm? Not much further, Mr. Jeffords. You'll see him playing just the other side of the creek. Whose horse is that over there? Yours, huh? Yes, sir. That's the mare. I was riding her. Is it all right if I get her now? Sure, go ahead. You call the boy Bob. Is that his name? <laughs> no, that's just to be friendly. If you'll come down this way, you'll see the tracks real good. Why does he mount the horse? I don't know. Hey! Hey, come back here! I'm in the clear. Go ahead, start shooting. Wait, man! Look on the clear! Wait, man! I don't know how long it lasted. One of their first shots had hit me. When I came to, I was alone. And then I... I saw something lying on the rocks below me. I got to my feet. The haze disappeared. Some theory. God in heaven. No. Ambush, my friend. It was me they were after. You... You are hurt bad? She's dead, Cochise. 
Sanseri is dead. They fired and ran. One I killed with an arrow. One was wounded by my men. He still lives. Give me a knife and bring him to me. It will not be done. Bring him to me. No, it will not be done. Some things a man cannot bear. Do you see her? She's dead. And this peace is a lie. They don't want peace. It is not a lie. I will not let you make it a lie. Are you a child that you thought peace would come easy? You who taught me so well? Is it my brother who asks me to spit on my word? Why do you speak to me? Speak to her. When she hears, I will hear. You will hear me now. You will hear this. This was not done by the military. Geronimo in the South breaks the peace no less than these whites. And as I will bear the murder of my people, so you will bear the murder of your wife. I am Cochise. I do not betray my people or their children. And no one on my territory will open war again. Not even you. He carried me back to the village. A few days later, he told me that some men from Tucson had come to see me. Bill Duffield was with them. And General Howard. Tom, we, uh, we've come to pay our respects, Tom. Thank you, Milton. We've rounded up every man that had anything to do with the ambush. They, uh, they're going to pay the full penalty for what they've done. Jeffords, I know nothing can compensate you for the terrible thing that has happened. But your friends here are trying to tell you that your very loss has finally brought our people together in the will for peace. Without that will, treaties are worth little or nothing. General Howard's words meant very little to me then. But as time passed, I came to know that the death of San Siri was like a seal upon the peace. And from that day on, wherever I went, in the cities, among the Apaches, in the mountains, I always remembered my wife was with me. Here's Libby Collins, our Hollywood reporter, with the Lux Movie News of the Week. I'm practically bursting with news tonight, John. First, my movie news. It's Payment on Demand, RKO's timely story of modern marriage. Superbly acted by Betty Davis as the brilliantly ambitious wife, and Barry Sullivan as the husband who is bored with his business success. With two such stars, no wonder it's outstanding. Well, it's a challenging domestic drama. Barry Sullivan wants to be a quiet, small-town lawyer. But Betty craves wealth and position, and by her relentless scheming, makes him a wealthy but unhappy executive of a big steel company. For a role like that, Betty must wear gorgeous clothes. Uh Uh-huh, she does. And here's where my second big news comes in. News about a washing miracle. New Lux with Color Freshener. This New Lux was used to care for all the fine washables of the entire cast. You should hear the wardrobe women rave. In the picture, Betty wears some ravishing blouses with her beautifully tailored suits. A navy and white dot, a cream-colored crepe, and a white lawn. Every time they were luxed, they looked as sparkling and fresh as new. Camera perfect. Michael Wolfe, famous RKO designer, could hardly believe his eyes. It's the most thrilling improvement ever made in Lux Flakes. Imagine that, ladies. Colors actually renew their brightness every time you wash them. Brighter than you ever dreamed possible. Prints come alive as never before. Look so gay and exciting, they're positively breathtaking. And white stay cloud white. Whiter than any other way of washing can make them. Your gayest prints, your most delicate colors, your frostiest whites sparkle with new beauty every time you wash them. Lux has been the favorite of screen stars, smart women everywhere, for years. Now new Lux is even more wonderful than ever. For blouses, washable dresses, lingerie, all your nice things. And safe and mild as always. Notice Betty's blouses when you see payment on demand. They were luxed again and again. Look as nice as brand new. When you try this new Lux, you're in for a thrill. You'll agree with screen stars, Hollywood dress designers, and heads of wardrobe departments. New Lux is the most wonderful clothes care you've ever discovered. 
Get a big box of Lux Flakes tomorrow. It's in your store now. Give all your pretty washables that nice as new Lux look. Now, here's Mr. Keeley with our stars. And here they are, Bert Lancaster, Jeff Chandler, and Deborah Paget for a special curtain call. Bert, we want to doubly thank you for stepping in at the crucial moment when Jimmy Stewart was taken ill. You were wonderful, Bert. I was glad to be... Thank you. I was glad to do it, Bill. And Jimmy, to you, hurry up and recover. You did such a great job of Tom Jeffords in the picture that I hated to follow you. You can have the part back now, but I'm going to keep your Lux Flakes. <laughs> That's okay, Bert, but confidentially, we're going to send Jimmy a double supply. We understand that he may become the papa of twins. <laughs> Don't tell me that's why he collapsed. Uh-oh, when he heard the news. <laughs> no, no, Bert, just the case of that old virus X. Jeff, we want to congratulate you on your new and successful picture career. But we do miss you here. I hope you'll come back and visit us often. Well, thank you, Bill. I'd like that. Just call me anytime. You better call Deborah, too. She and Jeff are becoming quite a team. Well, not exactly, Bert. I, I barely spoke to her in Broken Arrow. But in our new picture for 20th Century Fox, Bird of Paradise, you're my brother. This is an improvement. This time you marry Louis Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Jeff, there's no reason why we handsome fellows shouldn't always win the girl. It says here. I think you'd better tell us about next week's play, Mr. Keeley, before the Apaches declare war again. Yes, I agree with you. Well, Deborah, it can't be too long since you read the book, Robert Louis Stevenson's immortal classic, Treasure Island. And as our stars, we will have that distinguished British actor... James Mason, and the new and talented youngster, Bobby Driscoll, and that fine character actor, Nigel Bruce. We know the entire family will want to hear this great adventure story as it was brought to the screen by Walt Disney. Well, it sounds great, Bill. We'll be listening. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. You are all wonderful. Here's a tip from one of Hollywood's beautiful stars, Joan Fontaine. She says, it's easy to be Lux lovely. I depend on my daily Lux soap facials. They do wonders for the skin. Leave it softer, smoother, exquisitely fresh. Why don't you try this gentle care Joan Fontaine uses for her million-dollar complexion? Work the rich, creamy Lux soap lather well in. Rinse with warm water. Rinse again, this time with refreshing cold water. Now, pat your face dry with a soft towel. Your skin is so much lovelier after this beauty facial. Active lather does the trick. Give skin that luck lovely look. Put Hollywood's beauty soap on your shopping list now. Discover for yourself why nine out of ten screen stars use fragrant white Lux toilet soap. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents James Mason, Bobby Driscoll, and Nigel Bruce in Treasure Island. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Deborah Paget can soon be seen in 14 hours, a 20th Century Fox production, also starring Paul Douglas. Jeff Chandler appeared through the courtesy of Universal International Pictures, who will soon release Bedtime for Bonzo, starring Ronald Reagan and Diana Lynn, introducing Bonzo. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Rudy Schrager. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear Treasure Island, starring James Mason, Bobby Driscoll, and Nigel Bruce. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows over these same stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.